Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am John, this is Many a True Nerd, and this is Freedom Fighters. This was a shooter that came out on GameCube. I'm playing the GameCube version. It also came out on every other console of that day. This was back in 2003. This is our hero, Chris Stone. He didn't believe the communists were a threat. This is apparently how plumbers work in this universe. In this alternate history, doors are just left open in New York, and plumbers are allowed to just go in. Oh no, communists! Oh, Chris Stone, why didn't you listen? This is the bad guy. You can tell, because he's massive and beating people. So, this is... This is indeed... Oh, blimey. I'm going to get into cover first. Yeah, hide behind the fridge. Hide behind the fridge. This is uh, Freedom Fighters. This was a shoot that came out in 2003. This was made by IO Interactive, who are generally best known for the Hitman series of games. So these guys have some pretty good pedigree. Oh no, New York's being invaded. What is what is like what do made of media producers have against New York? They seriously have something that's new. New York always been invaded by aliens, or being invaded, or blown up, or something. Just, is it because Hollywood's on the West Coast, and they just really, really don't like the East Coast? So we're setting up, this is an alternative history, uh, in case you hadn't guessed, because uh, to the best of my knowledge, America was never actually uh, invaded uh, by Russia, especially not in the 1990s. So the jumping off point is uh, World War II, it was Russia that got to nukes first, not America, and thus they dropped them on Europe, not Japan, uh, thereby winning the war uh, before, kind of winning the war very, very early on, uh, earlier than in our usual history. So as a result, Russia became more and more powerful, and I'm not sure if America in this universe is ever supposed to have got nukes at all, that's kind of not clear. Um, but the point is, uh, that's jumping off point. It's, it's a bit of a dumb jumping off point in a lot of ways. I'm kind of, I'm a bit bored of the idea of what if someone else got nukes first. The new Wolfenstein game uh, that had its trailer at E3 recently is doing the same thing. They're doing the what if Germany had got nukes first. I kind of feel like, you know, I, I want to see a world where what happens if Bolivia had got nukes first. Or New Zealand. I want to see a Kiwi-dominated world. Let's look at the map because the mechanics behind Freedom Fighters are what made it so great. Basically, you are given in the game a uh, choice. Uh, you're not just given a level in a set order. Instead, there are little clusters. There's like neighbourhoods that you have to go into. So in this particular instance, I have a choice between uh, going to the post office... Or the police station. So what I'm going to do is, because the rebel leader is being held at the police station, I'm going to go there. So here we are, all by myself. All by myself, very sad, with only a gun. So I start there, on the map. You can see the little ladders are represent uh, any point on the map where there is actually going to be... Um, where there is uh, a manhole cover that I can use to get back into the sewer. So I have to get in and out only through these points. Do, 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 and the police station is just down this street, so I just need to head straight down here. Right now, there are snipers up there on that billboard, so going this way is suicide. So, now that I've picked up the C4 from the police, I'm going to head back to the sewers and go back in the other way and see what I can do with this C4. Access sewer, another location, so now I just nip across to the post office. Brooklyn Post Office. Boo! Well, no, not boo in general. I've got nothing against postal workers. Just kind of boo because of the flags. Right, watch out for enemy guards. Oh, hello. Hmm. This game was actually pretty easy. Uh, never worried too much about this game. I've got this game on easy mode anyway. Because to my mind, this game isn't about being difficult. This game is largely about just having fun. So... Place C4 on these fuel tanks. And get to a safe distance. But not too safe distance because I definitely want to be able to actually see it when it explodes. Eh, not bad. And as you can see, what's happened there is my charisma level 
has gone up. Doing things like that, uh, like uh, blowing up enemy installations, like freeing prisoners, like destroying crucial supplies, makes your charisma go up. And your charisma going up lets you do all sorts of good things. So, now let's head back to where we were supposed to be originally. Let's head back to the police station. No way, pal. No one gets by until Isabella is free. Okay, so now basically my... Uh, my friends, the Freedom Fighters, are openly telling me that I'm not allowed to go and save my brother and they're going to restrict my free movement until such time as I do their bidding. The good guys, ladies and gentlemen. The good guys. <sighs> right, back to the police station. Oh no. Oh, this. This is what happens under a communist system. All the traffic lights are permanently stuck on yellow. How will anyone know who's supposed to go where now? Ugh. So now, the smoke and the flames are blocking off the sniper's view, so we're safe. Don't worry about aiming too much, it's, unless you're actually using a sniper rifle, it's really not particularly, there's not really a desperate amount of point. Just... Yes. You'll just get plenty of ammo, just kind of run at people and press the fire button. Hello. Enter the police station through the parking garage, but stay low, or the soldiers will spot you. This game pretended to be about stealth sometimes. <laughs> oh dear, it wasn't about stealth. This game wasn't about stealth at all. You can kind of very clearly see the relationship that this had with Hitman 2. IO Interact have a really good pedigree for building uh, good third-person shooters, and they built a good one with this. Except unlike Hitman, which is very much, you know, obviously about very slow movement, and very careful planning, and very kind of big, strong guns that feel very, very powerful, this game was much less about that, and much more about just running around, having fun, and blowing things up. That's not to say it's not intelligent. It's actually very intelligent. There's things like... Generally, you look for ambulances because ambulances will contain med kits, and you look for um, you look for police cars out on the street uh, because that will be where that you get uh, that's where you get guns. Uh, you need to use cover, generally intelligent, especially when you go in the high difficulty settings. I've just got this on easy so I can run through it so I can show you more of the game. Uh, but when you get onto anything beyond the easiest levels, you need to actually start acting a bit more intelligently. You definitely can't do what I'm doing right now. Murdering communists. In many ways, the plot of this game really probably should annoy me more than it actually does. Mainly because, obviously, right now, America is being invaded. So we're right down on the streets uh, defending America against the evil invaders. And we saw the same sort of thing in Homefront. But as we can tell from the Call of Duty and Medal of Honor and all those sorts of games, Whenever we see America invading other countries, we're always playing as the American, then all of a sudden the invader is the good guys. It's probably the most overt and explicit example of pro-America bias in any media that I'm familiar with off the top of my head. Combined with the fact that the plot device of the end of World War II as, a, as the fulcrum um, and the starting point after which an alternate history is born is really, really overdone. So there's a lot there that I don't like. But then again, I I kind of have a theory about this game, which is, considering this game was made, uh, this game was released in 2003. Uh, so, you know, quite feasible to suggest that uh, production began uh, somewhere around uh, 2001. In fact, we do know uh, that from various comments that some parts of this game uh, were actually planned. Um, around about 2001 and that the guy who wrote the music for the game specifically said that he actually uh, wrote the music for this game uh, in Manhattan uh, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. I wonder if they were doing something um, insofar as you are an insurgent on the ground taking on an, taking on a ground invasion of your home country. The enemy openly referred to you as a terrorist. So I'd like to hope that maybe this is actually quite an intelligent subversion of some of the, when you think about it actually, quite disturbing tropes and assumptions made by some of the biggest mainstream games. Over here. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to you in a second. I'm just checking for ammo, I'm not ruling out the possibility there's more to do yet. Thanks. Don't forget the flag. Don't forget the flag, it's all about the flag. 
Especially when it's kind of this level of ridiculous kind of jingoism where you actually have to, uh, you actually have to take down the flag and put up the American flag. Which I'm just going to step away from the edge now because they're still shooting at me. I don't know. I feel like this whole thing could have been a bit of a critique of the way that generally games are set up where if... America is invading another country, you play as the invaders, but if you, uh, if you, America is being invaded, you will always play as the defenders. And typically in games, you're invading another country, and you're an American soldier, so it's fine to just kind of shoot everyone who you deem to be a terrorist who's got a gun. But in this game, uh, the positions were very much reversed, which you don't see in games, uh, so much. I mean, uh, the game Homefront did it, and the game Homefront played it straight and was utterly ridiculous. I would like to think that this game was actually... Trying to make a bit more of a point was actually just going to be intelligent, but then what do I know? Because I thought the film Red Dawn, the remake, would be a kind of a, a ridiculous parody because it was so insane it couldn't possibly be real that it was going to be actually quite a clever critique. It wasn't. It was just stupid. Okay, so we have now completed that area. And that means with the police station complete, we can go to the post office again. Because now we can go to the post office where we're going to rescue our brother. Isabella, you're back! Yes. And I owe it all to this man. Hey, you must be Chris. Come on in. <laughs> uh, I love how they didn't bother coming to rescue or anything. Apparently she's important, but they just couldn't be bothered. I did like the fact that when you look at the map, it's a bit of, it's a nice open map. There are normally multiple points of approach. It's not just a straight line. Too many modern urban shooters... It's basically just a long corridor with a couple of nice looking skyboxes around them. This game actually did give you some choices. I mean, I know this first mission is a little restrictive, but normally you didn't get a lot of freedom. Uh, and I think we'll see that more in the, uh, we'll see that more in the second, uh, second set of missions. So, this is what charisma is for. Now that I might filled up my charisma bar, I got an extra circle. So that means I get to go up to people and recruit them. So now these guys follow me around and I can give them orders so I can tell them to attack and defend and all sorts. Okay, so I know there's one guy here because they just found it. And flank him. Use your troops to draw fire. Flank and take them out. Generally, you kind of... Your troops shouldn't really be relied upon to do the fighting. They should be relied upon to draw enemies out so that you can shoot them. I, I like this system. It's not like... You basically, in some games when you get followers, the followers are basically just there to be effectively extra firepower. So Spec Ops The Line, as much as I love Spec Ops The Line, really the people you were with had no real function other than to basically be a sniper rifle. <laughs> uh, physics, just like uh, just like the Hitman games, there's some very nice physics in play here. So now just head into the post office and gun your way through it really. Right, keep going up. And hoist the stars and stripes. See, I, 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 I read this. When things like, oh, you need to hoist the stars and stripes to secure the location. Mm. I would generally work under the assumption that that was a joke. Because it's so ridiculous, the idea that you would secure a location just by putting an American flag over it. But then, the trailer for, uh, what was it? Was it Battle, was it, um... Was it Battlefield 4 recently? I, I can't even remember. One of the E3 trailers where you had to... Uh, one of the E3 trailers where effectively you were invading Shanghai. And you were going around just putting American flags up. Pulling down the uh, pulling down the actual flags and putting American flags up. And that was, that was not for humour. That was real. So, I don't know. I, I like this game better thinking that it's just kind of a bit of an insane parody of absurd nationalist jingoism I, I probably like it a lot less uh, if it wasn't if this is actually what the game thinks that you're supposed to do oh dear I really hope it's not I mean Hitman had a sense of humor Hitman was slightly silly oh it's another new sport I love the new sports this sort of action against the Soviet Liberation Army will not be tolerated and such attacks only increase tension here However, I assure you that this was an isolated event and we have restored peace and stability. Oh, it mission accomplished then, as it were. This freedom phantom is vigilante, a terrorist. But they are few and will be executed when caught. After a trial, of course. And on this reassuring note, let's look at the forecast. Threat of being held without trial, being called a terrorist. This, this can't possibly be real. This has got to be. This has got to be a parody. This has got to be a critique, right? 
This has got to be not serious, otherwise the people who made this game are as utterly insane as the people who made Red Dawn. Which is in which should be sad, because that, that's pretty damn insane. So, here we go. This is where the whole thing gets a little bit more interesting, because suddenly there's three layers. So, you've got to figure out there's actually three different areas. So you've got to figure out which is actually the most intelligent place to start. And very often it's not just a case of picking one and going in and doing it. It's very often picking one, going in and doing one thing inside it, and then moving on to another and doing that and actually picking a very specific order to do it in. So, in the fire station area we've got a bridge and if we take out that bridge with C4 then the number of troops in the other areas go down. So that might be a good place to start. But right now we don't have any C4 to actually do that with so we've got to find some C4. Meanwhile, the fire station is actually the kind of the headquarters of everything. So that's the ultimate goal, but that's going to be the most heavily defended. So possibly right now that might not be the best thing to do. Okay, so if we go to, meanwhile to the harbour area, we've got the helipad, which will ground the helicopter fleet. And seriously, in this game, helicopter gunships are no joke. You, you can take them on, and if you're good enough, you can take them out. But they're really, really difficult. It's a huge waste of ammo, and they'll often, they'll often do a lot of damage to you. So it's easier just to head to the helipads and take them out that way. And then there's the warehouse buildings, where if I take those, the enemy will have a lot less good guns. So again, very, very important. The hotel is the base of operations, that's probably the most heavily defended spot in this entire cluster of levels. But there's also a bunch of prisoners, and freeing prisoners will get you charisma that might let you have more followers, which will make taking anything else on more easily. They've also said that there is a diner somewhere in this area where we know we can get some explosives, so that might be a good spot to get the C4. Here's what I'm going to do. First things first, I am going to just go into the hotel area quickly. I'm going to go to that abandoned hotel. diner and I'm going to find some explosives. That's going to give me the C4. Here's another nice point uh, of the uh, the charisma system. I can just pick who I want as my uh, as my people to kind of come with me. So uh, if, for example, I know that I'm going to be doing lots of short range fighting, I can go for the people who are holding shotguns as a priority. Whereas if I want long range people, I might go for people who have got assault rifles. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to be in this position for long, so I'm just going to pick the first two guys I come across who have both got assault rifles. And we're just going to move straight on out. So... Go, go, go! I've changed to a shotgun, so everyone dies, which is nice. Okay, that's a bit too much firepower. We're just going to tell them to go over there. And we're just going to Molotov cocktail up a bit, because that is what they're kind of very good at. Yep, we'll do it this way now. And just charge in. And now we're just going to quickly go and heal up our friend. Which uses up a med kit, but is uh, is worth doing because they are useful for drawing fire and attention. C4 charge. Okay, good. Uh, I think you're only allowed to carry one, so that's fine. So now we're going to head out the back. We're going to leave the main troops alone for the time being. I know we've lost one of our guys, but I don't really. Uh, that's fine. He's he's totally replaceable. Uh, so we're going to head around this way, and we are going to go and free the prisoners because that will be some charisma in that for me. Incidentally, you don't lose charisma for leaving people to their deaths. Uh, kind of feels like, you know, you should do, but you don't, actually. Okay, now he will mind my back while I'm cracking open this uh, this cage of prisoners. Get us back to the sewers, quick. Reds will be crawling all over the place. So, when you free prisoners, you've got to get them back to the sewers. So the closest sewers will probably be uh, those ones on the far right, which is right next to the hotel, so it could be a bit difficult, but... Not too bad. Uh, I'm sure, I don't think you actually can lead them back the way that you came. Uh, I'm not sure there's an easy way to do that. So we're just going to go for it. We're just going to take our pistol. Uh, I'm going to take my one guy over here. And uh, we're going to hope this is going to work. And here we go. Into the sewers this way. So now I just open the sewer for them. That guy provides cover for me while I'm doing it. And those guys nip down, both of them make it safely out of here. And so we've got plus 15 charisma off both of them. So we're now very close to a new level. And I'm going to get out of here myself. So get out to another location. So we've now got C4 explosives. So I'm going to see if I can use 
They, they are, and I'm going to go to the fire station. I'm going to try and take out the bridge because that will stop the number of troops being so high. Though that loading screen does make me suspect helicopters, which could be bad. So it's maybe a misstep. We'll see. We'll see. This may have been a bad decision, but whatever. I don't the fact that, you know, pretty much wherever you go, you always feel like a little bit outgunned. You always feel just a tiny bit outgunned. That's a helicopter. Okay. That's a helicopter. That's very bad. Okay, so there's a helicopter over the bridge. We might be able to do this anyway. Not sure. That oh, looks like a way down. It's good. There are troops down there. We can probably handle it. Okay, I'm just going to get them to follow me. That's... That's why they're bad. Okay. Um... See if the helicopter's gonna go away. Go, just go, just go, just go, just go, just go. Okay. Keep the trains between me and the helicopter. That's pretty much the only chance I've got. Okay, just just come with me, come with me, come with me, come with me, come with me. Alright guys, just, just chill out down here. We just have to bomb the train, that's it. Okay, bomb the bridge. Fall back. And get back into cover, get back into cover, get back into cover. Okay, now. What is the quickest, easiest way for me to escape from this area? Um... The bridge is down, which is great, so that should make much, the uh, remaining areas very easy, but the helicopter is still causing us problems. If I can head out over to my right over there, that will be good. Looks like there might be another one right here. Okay, 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 get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Loads of freedom fighters who couldn't be bothered to help. Thanks, guys. Okay, mission complete. And not only that, but now we can have a third rebel. So I'm going to head back to the rebel base because I need to stock up my ammo. The reason I like this system particularly is because it basically allows you to have something thrown at you which clearly you're not capable of handling, uh, which is a good system. I mean, I always, I, I really dislike it in games when they kind of do things like they kind of say to you, oh, um, there's going to be a gunship in this next area. You know that in general that when games tell you there's going to be a gunship, you're just going to find a rocket launcher you can you can take it out with, or you're just going to be able to take it anyway. The game is going to give you enough ammo to do it. This game, if you ran into something, you honestly have to scratch it and just think, I probably can't take that. I'm going to back off. I'm going to run away, and I'm going to find a way to disable that more indirectly. I like the fact the game did that. Okay, so the number of troops has now been greatly reduced. Um, so, using the reduced troop numbers, I'm going to try and take out the warehouse and the helipad now. So hopefully there should now be far fewer enemies in this area, so it should be much easier to do. Come with me, this way. Yeah, we'll take you. Get over here. Right, let's go. Yeah, we're going to take you because I feel like I want a bit more gender equality on my team. It doesn't mean it's not perfect. It's still Women are still underrepresented on this team, but it's better than it was. Just bear in mind, I think kind of, I'm pretty sure, I don't actually know this for certain, but I'm pretty confident that uh, in this game, enemies pretty much spawn forever. Uh, there'll be plenty of times when you just can't... Uh, defeating them all, it just isn't an option. It isn't the point of the game at all. Um, so there's plenty of uh, times when you just need to kind of run and gun, which is good, actually. In this game, I think that actually works really well. Normally, I hate infinitely respawning enemies. I think they're kind of really annoying. In this game, I think it worked really, really nicely uh, because I think it created the feeling of being kind of constantly uh, in fear of being overwhelmed. Just kind of point vaguely in someone's direction. Your freedom fighters typically gain, pretty much figure out what you want to do. Back here. They're not very good at their pathfinding is a bit weak though, so don't don't expect too much from them or anything. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's very dismissive. Oh, stop stop crying, you big baby. You've only been shot. And yep, yeah, there we go. Now we just hoist the flag. America. Woo!
Ah, rare instance where uh, actually the uh, the enemy did actually uh, the freedom fighters did actually more kills than me. Excellent. So the harbour is taken, and that officially means the helipad is taken too. So presumably the helipad would actually have been easier to just storm, but I was able to just do it through going straight to the warehouse uh, buildings. Now that we've taken out uh, the troop numbers, and we've taken out the troop helicopters, and we've taken out the troop uh, gun strand, we're going to go for the uh, we're going to go for the fire station now. So we're going to take that out, and that means there will be no reinforcements coming in to help the hotel. And once that happens, we'll pretty much be able to stroll in and take the hotel relatively easy. Ah, uh, you see, I know there's not going to be helicopters. Dealt with that problem already. We're rolling. Let's move. Finally, somebody's taking charge. Lead the Follow way. me. This way. Right. Okay, I think I've got a good ethnic blend there. I'm pretty sure I've got one Asian, one Caucasian, and one African American. Uh, and I do like having a good blend. So. Let's head. No, just leave it. Walk away. Get back here. Get moving. Eliminate target. All of you. Pull out. Pull out. Move. Move. Okay, so everyone's Move. now going to follow me as we storm the fire station itself, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. So the fact it's extremely dark. Generally, if you see something moving, just shoot it. Don't be afraid to storm forward. In this game, often the very best tactic is just try to kind of storm your way to victory. Because if you if you put the American flag up, you've automatically won. That's kind of deemed a win condition. So basically, the Soviets see an American flag and they're kind of blinded. They suddenly they suddenly see nothing but bold eagles, and they just kind of give up. Because you just think, oh, oh. We can't, we can't take out this. We can't, we can't stand up against the American flag. It's got to be a parody. I really hope it's a parody. Oh, let's go. Okay, my freedom fighters go and do that. And meanwhile, I'm going to put the American flag up over the fire station, thus securing this area. So that was pretty easy because they didn't have gunships to protect them, uh, which was good. Good hotel. Okay, so the old hotel. The old hotel, even after everything we've done, is still not like desperately easy to take out. So we're still gonna we're still gonna have to handle this tactically. Okay, let's just let's just go through here. Let's just let's rather let's just kind of climb and go around because I don't really want to take on the enemy directly. Okay, so this is a good thing to do anyway. We are now. We are kind of going around and we're taking out the enemy who are in all the buildings around the site. Because otherwise they're just going to shoot us as we kind of go around the street. This is a good thing to do. So now we are going to go back over to where the prisoners were. And we're going to go around the back streets. Oh no, those are our friends. Okay, don't kill those guys. Those guys were our friends. Uh, now we want to go up through this building. I'm just going to quickly heal up because I've got loads of health kits. There is going to be a... Okay, there was a sniper here, but it looks like they've already killed... It looks like our friends already killed him, but that's fine because there are plenty of people that we can now snipe from this very good location. There we go. The point is we now know there is no sniper up here. There are now relatively few troops on the ground. The ones that are there are badly armed, and there will be no reinforcements coming. This is what I feel. This gives me, this gives me a really good feeling of satisfaction. Because normally in games like this, I just kind of feel like, yeah, I know, but the game, the game is going to have given me a way to win, so I don't really need to worry about it too much. This game, I feel like you're actually you are earning the win. When you when you win in this game, you've actually earned it. So I don't know. I I just really like this game as a result. Oh, I like more Russians. So, and now because of all this groundwork we've done, we can literally just kind of walk up to the hotel. There's no helicopters, there's no anything else. It's great. So, I've decided, I've chosen to make my life easy, so my life is easy. I feel like I've done preparation, so therefore I get to, uh, I get to have an easier life. And I feel like more games should do this. I feel like I want, if I do the preparation, my life to be much easier as a result. Plenty of games, they just kind of, they just give you things. Or if you do the preparation, they just adjust the difficulty upwards to compensate for the fact that you actually bother to do any work. Which kind of, I don't know, it really, to my mind, means there's just no point 
So, for example, like, say, Skyrim, I might spend ages re getting all the best, like, some of the best armors in the game really, really early. What happens is next time we go on a story mission, the game's decided it's going to, um, it's just going to have upped the difficulty to compensate for the fact I've now got good armors. Well, what was the point then? Why would I even oh bother with that? Ugh. Anyway, I like this game much, much better because I'm now just going to be able to walk up to victory in the hotel and take this area really, really easily. Incidentally, I didn't need to do any of these things. I could have, if I just wanted to come to the hotel and gum my way to victory, if I was good enough at this game, the game lets me do it. I can just shoot, I can just ignore, I can just run past the helicopter gunship or take it out. I can just do, I can just kind of do all sorts of things that let me just completely, uh, just completely work around the game. I don't need to do any of this. I chose to do all of this because I wanted to show it off because I think it's a real nice mechanic. So yeah, how easy was that? I just literally just walked up to the hotel. But if I'd have come here in the first place, you know, snipers, guys from every angle, because I did my preparation beforehand and during the mission, this was easy. And it should be. It should be easy. Oh, yeah. And that is... That is the uh, the second area and the first of the multi-part areas complete. And do we get a news? Do we normally get a news broadcast. This is normally your reward to get a news. Yes! We will be back after a short break. Stay with us. Kind of got to worry, wonder what the adverts are like under a communist regime. So here we are. It's another, it's another area. So again, you can go to the power station and take out the transformer tower, which makes it easier to get into the docks. Or you can go to the docks and you can take out the bridges, making it easy, making the, uh, which chokes off the reinforcements on the rest of the map. Or you can go to the movie theater to take out the helipad. And you can start anywhere. Then there's really good arguments to be made for starting on any particular, on any single location, which is great. I think it is great that games are like this, that games give you genuine choices that actually have genuine consequences. So, um, I'm not going to play any more of this uh, right now. Instead, I'm just going to encourage you to go out and buy this. It came out on GameCube and PS2, it came out on PC, it came out on original Xbox. So, you know, you can get a second-hand copy of this for nothing at all these days. It's IO Interactive, so if you enjoyed uh, the Hitman series, uh, then you know that this is a team that actually knows what they're doing. It's a really fun run-and-gun game, which is great. There's not enough of those these days. Run, There's no... There is kind of crouching and there is kind of a bit of cover. This game, cover is really in the minor key. It's much more about running around and having some fun, especially on the lower difficulty levels, which I thoroughly recommend uh, that you do, because I don't think this game should be taken too seriously. But I have played this game on the higher difficulty settings, and it's a really interesting challenge, because you spend a lot of time running around under a lot of fire, just desperately trying to get to an objective, and then desperately get back to the sewers. I've had some really fun, tense uh, moments in the, this game on the high difficulty. Um, one of the reasons why I, I also really hope that this kind of this game gets a little bit of attention is because IO has has made comments in the past, actually uh, talking about how they think it could potentially have a sequel. They've said in the past that it is on their to-do list. They've obviously been working on Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days, but given Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days uh, performed not brilliantly and had absolutely terrible reviews, who knows? Could it be possible we could actually finally get a sequel to Freedom Fighters? I really, really hope so, because... I didn't really enjoy Hitman Absolution. I loved the Hitman series. Uh, I loved Blood Money. I loved Hitman 2 as well. Uh, and I think Contracts was flawed, but fundamentally a really, really fun, interesting, good game. Um, but I really, really hope that now, uh, if Kane Lynch has had a bit of a bad time, that uh, they actually decide that they actually might want to might want to give some love to uh, to this little game. So, who knows? I really hope so, anyway. So yeah, I I really enjoy this game. I have a lot of fun with this game. I think more most importantly of all, this game really does kind of make me feel like I'm actually achieving something. It kind of I feel like it really rewards you. So uh, that was Freedom Fighters. I really hope you give this game a try because it's a cracking little game and it didn't sell very well, really, and it really should have done. So uh, I was John. This was Many a True Nerd. Thank you very much for watching, and I will have a new video up very, very soon. So, uh, thank you very much, and goodbye.